Welcome to this presentation where I will look at uh, two tremendous challenges that we face in our current societies uh, today. Climate changes and uh, the rising health problems illustrated by the rising NCDs. Uh, during my presentation, I will make the point that uh, we have to and we should uh, view these two different uh, trends and challenges as closely interrelated. I would also make uh, the important point that uh, what we see in the climate uh, change movement, if we could call it that at the moment, is a tremendous public engagement and commitment, especially uh, among young people and children. And therefore, I will raise the question, can we, from the public health uh, side, tap into it, to this uh, commitment, this energy that uh, is uh, so strong at the moment in, in the climate uh, uh, change uh, area. So um, first of all, I have a quote from the International Diabetes Foundation and uh, it's from 2012 and uh, it very much illustrated that this is uh, when uh, uh, the period started with a lot of focus on uh, linking health and climate issues uh, that we have seen over the last 10 years. So the, the quote says that diabetes and climate change work separately and together to undermine human and economic development. So it's not just a question of uh, reduce uh, diseases, but it's also about taking care of our economic uh, systems, our welfare systems and so on. Then another quote, also from the International Diabetes Foundation from their panel on diabetes and climate change, where they uh, actually say that diabetes and climate, they are very much linked. They, uh, they say, and I like really that uh, quote, that they are different drums, but they play in the same orchestra. So um, this is also in a way illustrated uh, from this uh, figure here. The figure is from one of the books that uh, came out in 2010, and uh, it was one of the books that kicked off the interest to look at uh, climate and, 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 and the health issues from the same, you could say, uh, point of uh, view from the same perspective. And in this model here, uh, uh, you can see that uh, BMI and gasoline consumption uh, are closely related. Each dot represents uh, a country, uh, one out of 130 countries, uh, which are um, involved in this uh, uh, illustration here. And the book um, written by Ian Roberts uh, had the fascinating title, The Energy Blood, The Politics of Fatness in an Overheating World, which I think is really a fascinating and also provoking uh, title and um, so it's just one example the the book is full of those kind of uh, presentations and illustrations in this model i've tried to make some of the same points at the uh, left side here we have the uh, a graph showing that uh, the, the rise of uh, co2 co2 in the um, atmosphere from 1960 to 2010 and at the right side we see the prevalence of getting uh, of diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes in the United States in the same period where the light blue uh, is uh, the numbers from all ages and when you look at people above 65 then you have the uh, dark blue uh, columns. So um, you can see the same rise uh, going on in, in the two areas uh, uh, in this uh, the same time period. And then we have the whole civilization lying beneath this urbanization, uh, energy consumption, transport systems, uh, agricultural development, industrialized agriculture uh, development, and so on. So therefore, from this model, uh, we can talk about three different uh, links. One is going from the climate uh, area to the health area, illustrating that climate uh, problems also affect uh, health uh, at a global and a local levels in very negative ways. And we have many, um, um, uh, many surveys and many uh, 
examples illustrating this uh, general uh, uh, aspect. Uh, for instance, uh, when temperature rises, the risk for a number of diseases also rise. Uh, uh, traffic give rise, uh, gives rise to uh, air pollution of noxides and uh, particles and so on, causing increased risk of uh, uh, lung disease, uh, heart disease, uh, blood pressure, uh, and so on. And noise from the traffic, uh, in one of the recent studies, uh, it's telling us that noise from traffic in certain areas in our cities would also uh, increase the risk for getting uh, type 2 diabetes. So lots of um, examples illustrate this uh, link here. But we could also look at, the, at it the other way, looking at how health is developing also influences uh, the uh, climate area. For instance, if uh, more people in a society, they become uh, obese, uh, the need for transportation will rise uh, and therefore also the uh, um, uh, consumption of uh, energy and um, the food we eat. Uh, we know that uh, uh, if we eat food uh, or meat from animals, the uh, consumption of energy and the CO2 pollution will be much higher compared to uh, meals that are made of uh, more um, vegetarian uh, um, uh, things. So many examples illustrate that uh, there is also uh, uh, an influence going from uh, the, the health side towards uh, the climate side. And for that reason, we also see in many of our countries that the uh, nutritional pieces of, ad, uh, pieces of advice in the nutrition area are now uh, becoming to involve and include climate issues as well. So, so uh, so there's definitely a, a more um, a stronger focus on, on that uh, relation as well. Then the third one, which is probably the most interesting and important tendency, is that uh, the two areas and the problems we see in the two areas, the health area and the climate area, are basically driven by the same root causes. So the same mechanisms in our societies are the the, the uh, root causes behind the problems that we face. Uh, it has been, uh, there has been quite a number of reports uh, making that statement and also trying to, to describe it in more details. And, uh, and, and one aspect is, of course, the increased urbanization that we see all over the world, uh, which will lead to increased transport, less possibilities for physical activity, uh, more pollution and, and so on. So urbanization is one of these uh, root causes or, or ground drivers behind these two problems. The global food production system, where we increasingly are able to buy food coming uh, from far away. So the uh, transport of food has increased uh, with lots of uh, energy problems or energy consumption related problems uh, closely linked. And, um, and if we look at the, um, the whole development of the um, dominating agricultural uh, system in our societies, you could describe it as a, a very effective machine that is actually under enormous energy consumption, uh, transforming protein to fat. So for that reason, the food production system, including the, uh, the uh, agricultural uh, system, is uh, a second, you could say, important driver behind this. The third one is the demography. We are getting more and more people. Uh, we are getting more and more elderly people. And both are also uh, involved in, in influencing both of these areas. So these are the three, you could say, uh, mechanisms that are um, important to address when we look at climate issues and health issues uh, together. And I find the, uh, the third number of arrows going from the civilization towards the two uh, fields that are uh, uh, challenging our societies, very important. And, and from that, I think we can draw a number of conclusions because uh, for that reason, we have the same, same agenda to uh, 
uh, to struggle with professionals in the climate uh, area and professionals in in the health area if we really want to solve the problems um, and uh, it has also been raised as a question over the last 10 years uh, from different uh, reports and also from different uh, scientific journals if and in and if yes in which ways health professionals should engage in the climate debate and uh, i have a few examples there are many many more the critical medical British Medical Journal here uh, had an article in 2012 uh, asking the question uh, how the low carbon economy can improve health. So a close link between climate and, and health uh, is made here. The, the International Diabetes Federation that I talked about before, their report from 2012, very exciting material, lots of models and, and interesting stuff. Uh, the recent uh, global summit uh, where we uh, gathered a lot of city leaders in Copenhagen uh, came to the same conclusion that climate and health share the same root causes. And uh, The Lancet had a number of uh, articles over the last 10 years. This one from 2015 asking uh, or looking at health and climate change, what should the policy responses to protect public health be? Another article from The Lancet uh, from 2010, where they looked at the role of doctors in climate change. What should they do? What should they say uh, uh, if they had this more holistic view on how health develops? And then a recent article also from The Lancet in 2020, looking at doctors and a possible civil disobedience. What happens and, and how can doctors um, justify if they get involved in climate issues, demonstrations and so on as part of their work. And another article also from 2020 asking the same question but uh, looking at a broader group of professionals working in the health area. So there's definitely a lot of attention uh, um, uh, around this issue at the moment. Which is why I think it's important for us as uh, public health professionals and all researchers to reflect on this and to ask ourselves um, how do we actually uh, um, as professionals how do we tap into this public engagement that we see in climate issue and that we especially see among uh, young people a really a powerful driving force uh, that we have seen uh, changing a lot of aspects over the last one or two years and uh, how do we also relate to the climate movement? Uh, should we be better to integrate and make climate issues visible in the public health work that we are doing? Is that a way forward? Should we make public health issues visible in the climate discussion? Uh, do we have a role there? Should we do both? And then should we invite the climate movement to collaborate at local, uh, national and international levels with public uh, health people. So, and there might be other questions to ask, and I think it's really timely for us uh, at the moment to, uh, to take up these uh, questions. And uh, therefore, I thank you for listening, and I wish you good luck for, with your fruitful reflections and hopefully uh, discussions with colleagues from your own area and from other areas. And if you have any comments uh, or questions, uh, you're always uh, welcome to send them to me, of course. Thank you very much.